approximate integration. So the basic idea behind this section is there are some elementary functions that do not have an integral that is also an elementary function. And so if you think about that, if you can't figure out the antiderivative, you would have a difficult time then you know, substituting the lower and upper limits and subtracting appropriately. Of course, other times we may not even have a function that's a formula, but we might just have a collection of data from an experiment. In either of these cases, we may need to uh, evaluate the integral over some interval a to b. And so we're going to need some approximate methods. We're going to show several of those methods uh, here. You hopefully learned a couple other methods maybe in your Calculus 1 course. The first method we'll discuss here is called the midpoint rule. And the idea is that we approximate the area of a region under a function over an interval by breaking the interval into subintervals. The width of the subinterval is the width of rectangles that we will use to approximate the area. Rectangles, that's easy to find the area of a rectangle, it's just length times width. We know the width, we find the length, and we call that the height of the rectangle, and to determine that height of the rectangle, we will evaluate the function at the midpoint of each subinterval. And so then the integral from a to b of the function, and so for the midpoint rule, we'll use the notation eb sub n. All right, so that'll stand for midpoint rule. And the midpoint rule uh, over some number n, so n is the number of subintervals, is given by delta x times f of x1 bar plus f of x2 bar plus up through f of xn bar. All right, now what does this mean? The delta x is b minus a over n. It's the width of each subinterval. We take the upper limit, subtract the lower end, uh, limit, divide by the number of subintervals, and that gives us the delta x. And x sub i bar, what that is, is half of x sub i minus 1 plus x sub i. That's the midway point of each subinterval. All right, so let's see an example. Use the midpoint rule with n equals 4 to approximate the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x squared dx. So in fact, this is an example of an integral that cannot be evaluated using uh, an elementary uh, antiderivative. It just doesn't exist. There is no elementary antiderivative of this function. Try whatever techniques you want. So instead what we'll do here is we'll use the midpoint rule. All right, so our notation would be that m sub 4 would be we need delta x times f of x sub 1 bar plus f of x sub 2 bar plus f of x sub 3 bar plus f of x sub 4 bar. Now, let's figure out what all these things mean. Delta x would be the upper limit minus the lower limit, so pi over 2 minus 0, divided by the number of subintervals, which is 4, and so this is then pi over 8. Now, f of x sub 1 bar. Well, x sub 1 bar would be the midpoint of, now let's see, we're starting at 0, and we're going to pi over 2, so and we're breaking this up into four subintervals. So one, two, three, there's four subintervals. So this, there's pi over eight, and there's three pi over eight. So then the midway point between, uh, over the first subinterval would be half of zero plus pi over eight, and so that would be half of pi over 16. 
I'm sorry, that would be half of pi over 8, which would be pi over 16. Similarly, x sub 2 bar would be half of pi over 8 plus pi over 4, which is half of 3 pi over 8, adding those fractions, which is then 3 pi over 16. x sub 3 bar, that would be half of pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 8, which is half of 5 pi over 8, which is 5 pi over 16. And similarly, you can find that x sub 4 bar is going to be 7 pi over 16. So then m sub 4 would be pi over 8 times f of pi over 16 plus f of 3 pi over 16 plus f of 5 pi over 16 plus f of 7 pi over 16. And so now all we need to do is evaluate the function at each of those uh, values add them up and multiply by pi over 8. And I guess I should have mentioned that what we're saying is the function, what we're saying is the f of x is the, the sine of x squared. All right, so this is our f of x. Now we can evaluate each of these one by one on the calculator. So you know, for example, uh, here it is on the TI-89. Let me check my mode. Let me make sure I'm in radian mode. Uh, I am in radian mode. All right, so for example, I could do the sine of, oh, we need the sine of x squared. So I need the sine of parentheses pi over 16. Close off those parentheses on the, on the inside. Now I need to square that and hit and close the sign and now I'll hit enter and it gives me that now I need to approximate I want to approximate that so here I'll hit green enter and it gives me this point zero three eight five four four now I'm gonna to have to do this several more times so let me show you another approach to doing this What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my y equals screen and I'm going to set in the function sine of x square and now let me go back to the home screen and what I'll do is I've called that function y1. So I'm going to now evaluate y1 of pi over 16. And I'll hit green enter to get an approximation and notice it gives me the same result. Alright, so now what I want to do is I'm going to evaluate those four values, y1 of pi over 16 plus y1 of pi over, I'm sorry, I need a 3 there, don't I? 3 pi over 16 plus y1 of 5 pi over 16 plus y1 of 7 pi over 16. And I'll approximate that, hit green enter, and I get 2.14975. So this becomes then pi over 8 times 2 point, I forgot the values, 2.14975. And now multiplying by pi over 8, so let me go back to the calculator, let's multiply that by pi over 8, and again I hit green enter to approximate that, and I get 0 0.844204. And so this is the approximation of that integral. Now we could actually use the calculator to give a better approximation of the integral using the tools that are built in on the calculator, and you should have learned how to do this in Calc 1. So let me go back to my let me go back to my y equals screen. There's my function. Let me recreate the graph on, on my calculator. 
So let me set my window. Uh, let's go from, how about, what, negative one. Uh, I'm going to pi over two, so let me, let, let's go to two. Pi over two is about 1.57, and I'll use a scale of ones there. And on the y, let's go from negative one to two as well. And let me graph the function. So here is the graph of the function. And we wanted to integrate this from zero to pi over two. All right, so from the graph, I can go to my F5 and integrate. The lower limit is zero and the upper limit is pi over two and hit enter. And it shades the region and gives us that the integral over that, uh, that interval is 0.828116. So we can see that our approximation is not that bad at 0.844204. So we can do that from the graph. Of course, we could have also integrated directly from the home screen. Uh, if you go into your calc menu from the home screen, F3, integrate, it brings up your integral symbol. We type in the integrand, which again was sine of x squared. Clo oh, comma, after the integrand, we're integrating with respect to x from 0 to pi over 2. So notice how I've used commas to separate those different things that we're calling up. If I hit enter, Notice again, it gives us the point 828116. Now, if you're on the TI 83 or 84, you can use a similar process. Uh, it's just a little bit tougher to get there. So on my Y, well, let me check my mode. I am in radian mode, that's important. In my Y equals screen, sine of X square. All right, now I'll go back to the home screen. And now to call up the, the Y1, it's a little tougher. I have to go through the variables button, go over to the Y variables, hit enter on function and type and hit enter on the Y1. And so Y1 of, uh, what did we have first? Pi over 16 plus, now I have to go through that process again variables, y variables, function, y1 of 3 pi over 16 plus variables, y variables, function, y1 of 5 pi over 16 plus, and one more time, y1 of 7 pi over 16 and we hit enter there and again it gives us that 2.14974 and then again we would multiply that by pi over 8 and we get the approximation. A little tougher to do on the TI-83 or 84, not impossible. Oh, and if you weren't aware of it, you can also evaluate uh, integrals on the 8384 calculator. Uh, the process is, again, a little different. You go into your math menu, scroll down until you find the FNINT. This numerically integrates a function using a different algorithm, but the, the sequence of button presses is pretty much the same as on the 89 from here. Uh, we would type sine x square, close that off, comma, so again that's the integrand, now the variable x, again another comma from 0, again another comma to pi over 2, close it off, and hit enter. And again it gives us 0.828 approximately. So that's the midpoint rule. A second technique that we can use in approximating integrals is called the trapezoidal rule. And the idea behind this one is we approximate the area of a region under, an, uh, under a function over an interval, again by breaking the interval into subintervals. The width is again 
um, the width of the trapezoid. But now, instead of using the midpoint, what we do is we create a trapezoid instead of a rectangle. And so, if we think about the area of, uh, of a trapezoid of this type, let me draw a rough trapezoid here. So, I'm going to try to exaggerate this a little bit. So here is a trapezoid. And so if this is x sub 0 and this is x sub 1, then this height is f of x sub 0, and this height is f of x sub 1. And so what happens is, to find the area of the trapezoid, we basically are finding this height. We're creating a rectangle that's of this height and this height ends up being the midpoint of those function values. So that's f of x sub 0 plus f of x sub 1 and then divide that by 2. And then as we do that for all the different uh, subintervals, we get this sort of formula. All right, we use the abbreviation T sub n for the trapezoidal rule, and it's approximated by delta x over 2 times the quantity f of x sub 0 plus 2 f of x sub 1 2 plus 2 f of x sub 2 plus up through 2 times f of x sub n minus 1 and then the final uh, function value f of x sub n. All right, so now let's use the trapezoidal rule with uh, that same function, that same sine of, of x squared and again with n equal to 4. So now the trapezoidal rule says, okay, if n equals 4, then here we have the 0, and that's 0. Again, we have this pi over 8, pi over 4. There's 3 pi over 8 and pi over 2. So then, again, the delta x would still be pi over 2 minus 0 over 2, which is pi over 4. All right, so then the, trapez uh, the trapezoidal rule, so approximating with t sub 4, which would be then pi over 4 divided by 2 times f of 0 plus 2 f of pi over 8 plus 2 f of pi over 4 plus 2 f of 3 pi over 8 plus f of pi over 2. All right, so in the trapezoidal rule, we take the delta x and divide it by 2. The first and last, the endpoints, we find their function values, and then each of the subinterval points we double the function value. So now, again, I'll show how we can use the calculator, and I'm only going to show the TI-89 from now on. All right, I'm still using the same function. All right, so I've got the Y1 still set in, so I would have Y1 of 0 plus 2 times y1 of pi over 8 plus 2 times y1 of pi over 4 plus 2 times y1 of 3 pi over 8 plus y1 of pi over 2. And I forgot to hit second. I forgot to hit the green and enter to get an approximation. All right, so now we have pi over 2, um, pi, over, pi over 4. Sorry, that delta x is incorrect. The delta x, 
Oh, sorry. I divided by 2 here. The delta x dividing by n should have been divided by 4, so that's pi over 8. And so here we have pi over 8 over 2. So that becomes then pi over 16 times that sum is 6.35552. And so now multiplying by pi over 16, we get Now we'll use the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4 to approximate the integral, the same integral as before from 0 to pi over 2 of sine of x squared dx. All right, so again our delta x would still be pi over 2 minus 0 over 4 since n equals 4, which is again pi over 8. And using the trapezoidal rule with n equal to 4, we would approximate and use the symbols t sub 4. And so we would have then delta x over 2 times, and now we would have the left boundary, so f of 0, plus twice, and so our first subinterval mark would be at pi over 8. So 2 times f of pi over 8, again a 2, 2 times f of pi over 4, our third subinterval is at 3 pi over 8. So again, at plus 2 times f of 3 pi over 8. And then when we get to the left boundary, we would only have f of pi over 2. I'm sorry, the right boundary. I said left. All right, so now our delta x is pi over 8, and pi over 8 over 2 is So that should be a pi over 8, and so we'd have pi over 16. And now again, I'm going to use the calculator to find this approximation. All right, so my function is still in my y equals screen. And so I'd have y1 of 0 plus 2 times y1 of pi over 8. And I'll continue doing this through the next several terms. And remember, on the right boundary, we don't multiply it by 2. We would just have plus y1 of pi over 2. All right, I'll approximate that. And so that is 4.05505.
and multiplying that by pi over 16. We get 0 0.796208. And so there's the trapezoidal rule approximation. The third technique that we'll show in this section is called Simpson's Rule. And the idea behind this one is instead of using trapezoids to approximate the area, we use parabolas to approximate the area. And so in this diagram, the original function is in blue. All right, so the original function is in blue. And if we look at these three points on the curve, P0, P1, and P2, then the red curve is the quadratic function, the parabola that approximates the, or that models that curve over those three points. We find those three we find that parabola over the three points using techniques we've learned somewhere in the past, and then we integrate over that subinterval that quadratic function and we add up all of those and so the f the formula that we get and this is just something that you know for uh, for the test you'll have to memorize the Simpson's rule says that s sub n all right so that's what we use for Simpson's rule s sub n is equal to delta x over 3 times f of x sub 0 so notice that the leftmost and the rightmost aren't multiplied by any constant and then it switches off from there. We get a 4, a 2, a 4, a 2, a 4. So we have on the outsides we have just the function values and then on the insides it's 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4. It always starts with a 4 and ends with a 4. The textbook goes into greater detail on how this formula comes to be. And so if you're more interested on this, you should read into that section and look up those details. I should note that for Simps Simpson's rule will only work if n is even. All right, so now we'll use Simpson's rule with n equal to 4 to approximate the same integral. All right, again, our delta x is the same as before. We still have the same function over the same interval, so our delta x is still pi over 8. So then Simpson's rule with n equal to 4 tells us that the integral is equal to delta x, which is pi over 8, over 3 times f of 0 plus 4 f of pi over 8 plus 2 f of pi over 4 plus 4 f of 3 pi over 8 plus f of pi over 2. All right, so notice how Look at the coefficients, right? We have ones on the outsides, and then in between it, it alternates four, two, four. Now, if we were going with n equals six, on the inside it would have been one and one, and then four, two, four, two, four. All right, now again, let me go to the calculator. And notice that this is similar to the trapezoidal rule but just the coefficients are different. So on the TI-89, what I can do is just move up to that line that I used for the uh, trapezoidal rule. I'll hit enter, and it brings up that line that I typed in, and then all I need to do is change some of the coefficients. I've got y1 of 0, and I need to change that first 2 to a 4. Leave the next 2 alone, and then I need to change that last 2 to a 4. And then I'll hit green, enter to get an approximation. And so now I have, I would have a pi pi 
pi over 24 times, and so everything on the inside is approximated by 6.32891. and multiplying that by pi over 24, 0.828452. And if you remember back from what we showed with the midpoint rule, we found that this integral using the calculator using just the calculator, we found that a better approximation of this was 0.828116. And so you can see that this, that Simpson's rule, gives a pretty good approximation. And if we were to let n become greater, n equals 6, n equals 8, n equals 10, n equals 12, we would get closer and closer and closer to the exact value of the integral. All right, that concludes this presentation.